to play devil's advocate on D loads a little bit here, you know, one, be with a lot of clients that I work with, you know, they're, let's say, 30s, 40s, 50s, sometimes in their 60s, and already kind of intermittently train as is, right? And they may only be training two times a week, three times a week, four times a week. And, you know, they may stream together three weeks where they're training three, four times a week, and they do really well. And they're, they're pushing the envelope and they're being, quote unquote, buried a little bit. They're being really challenged. But there's also times where weeks go by where they'll check in and say, hey, I only got to train two, two times this week out of the four days that we kind of had programmed. Now, over a course of three to four weeks, if that's something that persists and is, stays intermittent, I'm not actually going to probably plan a proactive deload for them. Right. And so for, you know, I, I think deloads are something that really are context dependent on the person, right? Whether you're talking about an athlete who shows up, you know, we're talking about, let's say you guys here who are showing up and just burying yourself day in and day out, right? I do that at times. <laughs> um, <laughs> I may crank that back up, who knows? Now that I'm in the physique development training app, honest to God, my back and today, like even leaving my session yesterday, my quads were torched. Yeah. <laughs> they were thrashed. And I was like, I had that feel, like a feeling I haven't had in such a long time of like, I'm actually nervous for tomorrow morning. <laughs> And I'm nervous for tomorrow's session because I know I'm going to have to to RDL. I know I'm going to have to do seated leg curl, which I'm going to have to smash that pad into my quad, which I'm a little nervous about. And honestly, at this point, I'm just going to do a lying leg curl instead. <laughs> uh, we already know that's true. Yeah. Auto regulation uh, the, right there. <laughs> that's auto regulation right there. Exactly. So it's it's taking something where you're like, hey, it's either I don't do this at all or I do something adjacent to this. And get some work done. And hey, I'm going to do whatever's adjacent to that, which is the lying leg curl to the seated leg curl there. And but with the deloads, I, I think this is important. So if you're a listener and let's say you you're a client of ours, or you have a coach of some kind, or you are a coach and you have you or your client is training consistently, consistently hard, consistently progressing, consistently pushing the envelope, you need to be a little bit more proactive within your periodization and your planning of deloads. Mm hmm. But when you have someone who is a little bit more intermittent, their goals are a little less so than, or a little less ambitious, let's say, to the athlete who may, may be competing or competing in an athletic sport, things become a little bit more reactive, right? You tend to plan things a little less in terms of deloads for those people who are training a little bit less or less intense. And honestly, to kind of cap this off, life in a lot of ways kind of takes care of deloads for a lot of people. So, you know, you'll be training hard for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, you, you name it, whatever that progression is and however that biofeedback is looking at the time. And then they, they go out, you know, they go on a long weekend with their family or they go on vacation. And that one proactively is already a good time for you as a coach to say, hey, we're just going to use that week. I know you're going away that week. So let's push until that point. Right. Because I know you're not going to train. I don't need to be pressured to train while you're away. And so that's a really great way to do it. And, you know, speaking of deloads, vacation is deloads uh, arrive in all parts of our life. Vacation is a life deload. Diet breaks are nutritional deloads. Right. And the deloads we're talking about more specific today are training deloads. Right. We have a t we have deloads that that pop up in all parts of our life because we have to we have to de-stress. Right. We only have so much bandwidth. We only have so much will to keep pushing our physiology past the point of our brain saying, dude, relax. I need time to recover from this or else I'm just going to continue to break down time and time again. And I'm going to get sick. I'm going to, I'm going to get injured. And our training performance is either going to stall or even start to go down. Right? So deloads are context dependent. If you can take anything from that, and it's something that you need to take into consideration, whether for yourself or for your clients.